Hi, and welcome to this Spotlight Lecture on Major Sleep Disorders. I'm your guest lecturer, Dr. Sue Preeb. Data from the National Sleep Foundation annual polls indicate that sleep disorders are surprisingly common. The polls indicate that about 7 out of 10 people experience regular sleep disruptions. These disruptions become a sleep disorder when A, abnormal sleep patterns consistently occur, B, they cause subjective distress, and C, they interfere with a person's daytime functioning. Sleep disorders take many different forms. However, they can be grouped into two major types. Dysomnias, which are sleep disorders involving disruptions in the amount, quality, or timing of sleep. Insomnia, sleep apnea, and narcolepsy are examples of dysomnias. Also, we'll consider the parasomnias, which are sleep disorders involving undesirable physical arousal, behaviors, or events during sleep or sleep transitions. Insomnia is not defined solely based on how long a person sleeps. Why? Well, simply put, because people vary in how much sleep they need to feel refreshed. Rather, insomnia is diagnosed when people repeatedly, one, complain about the quality or duration of their sleep, two, have difficulty going to sleep or staying asleep, or three, wake before it's time to get up. Regularly taking 30 minutes or longer to fall asleep is considered to be a symptom of insomnia. These disruptions must, occur, must also produce daytime sleepiness, fatigue, impaired social or occupational performance, or mood disturbances. Insomnia is the most common sleep complaint among adults. Although estimates vary, about one out of three people occasionally experience transient insomnia, which lasts from one or two nights to a couple of weeks. About one out of ten adults experience chronic insomnia, which is defined as at least three nights each week for a month or longer. The risk of insomnia is influenced by gender and age. Women are twice as likely to suffer from insomnia as men. Although many causes can initially trigger insomnia, psychological and behavioral factors are almost always involved in perpetuating the problem. A second type of sleep disorder is sleep apnea. Excessive daytime sleepiness is a key symptom of this second most common sleep disorder. In sleep apnea, the sleeper's airway becomes narrowed or blocked, causing very shallow breathing or repeated pauses in breathing. Each time breathing stops, oxygen blood levels decrease and carbon dioxide blood levels increase. In response to these internal warning signals, the brain triggers a momentary awakening. Over the course of a night, 300 or more sleep apnea episodes can occur. Sleep apnea disrupts the quality and quantity of a person's sleep, causing daytime grogginess, poor concentration, memory and learning problems, and irritability. Although sleep apnea can occur in any age, including small children, it becomes more common as people age. It's also more common in men than women. Sleep apnea can often be treated with lifestyle changes, such as avoiding alcohol or losing weight. In moderate to severe cases of sleep apnea are usually treated with continuous positive airway pressure, or a CPAP. It's a device that increases air pressure in the throat so that the airway remains open. Now let's look at narcolepsy. 
Even with adequate nighttime sleep, people with narcolepsy experience overwhelming bouts of excessive daytime sleepiness and brief uncontrollable episodes of sleep. These involuntary sleep episodes, called sleep attacks, typically last from a few seconds to a few minutes. During a sleep attack, people can display automatic behavior and continue, and continue to perform a routine behavior, such as writing or driving. But as you might suspect, task performance is impaired. This automatic behavior is very similar to the movement capabilities that can occur during normal non-REM sleep at night. Narcolepsy is considered a lifelong and chronic condition. The onset can occur at any age. Although genetics may play a role, about 10% of people with narcolepsy have a relative with the same symptoms. Most people with the disorder have no family history. Research points to multiple factors in the development of narcolepsy, including chromosomal, brain, neurotransmitter, and immune system abnormalities. Now let's look at the other broad category of sleep disorders, the parasomnias. We tend to think of sleep as an either or phenomen phenomenon. We're either asleep or we're awake. But as the parasomnias show, sometimes sleep and waking states overlap. And while some parts of the brain, such as those involved in judging, thinking, or forming new memories are asleep, other, more primitive parts of the brain may become activated. The parasomnias are a collection of sleep disorders that are characterized by undesirable physical arousal behaviors or events during sleep or sleep transition. Whether involving very simple or very complex behaviors, all of the parasomnias involve some mixture of sleep and waking arousal or behavior. In essence, the brain is partially awake, awake enough to carry out the actions, but not awake enough to be consciously aware of performing the actions. So a key characteristic of the parasomnias is a lack of awareness while performing the actions and total amnesia for the behaviors or events upon awakening. Some of the other characteristics of parasomnias include that they occur during the non-REM stages three and four, which usually occur in the first half of the night. They are more common in children and decrease with age. They do tend to occur in multiple family or extended family members, suggesting a possible genetic predisposition. And they can be triggered by a wide range of stimuli including sleep deprivation, stress, erratic sleep schedules, sleeping medications, stimulants, pregnancy, pregnancy, and tranquilizers. The parasomnias were once thought to be extremely rare, especially in adults. However, sleep researchers have discovered that some parasomnias, like sleepwalking, are relatively common. Well, let's look at some of the specific parasomnias next including sleep terrors, sleep sex, sleepwalking, and sleep-related eating disorder. Also called night terrors, sleep terrors typically occur in the first few hours of sleep during stage three or four of non-REM sleep. Physiologically, the first sign of a sleep terror is sharply increased physiological arousal, restlessness, sweating, and a racing heart. The person abruptly sits up in bed and they let out a panic-stricken scream or cry for help. To anyone who investigates, the, pierce, the person appears to be awake, thrashing in bed, terrified and disoriented. Whereas a nightmare, which is different from a night terror, which involves a progressive unpleasant dream story, a sleep terror is usually accompanied by a single but terrifying sensation, such as being crushed or choking or falling. The person may imagine that he or she is being smothered or that a threatening figure is present, such as a monster or an animal. 
It's usually impossible to calm the person, although they may appear to be awake. Sleep terrors are dramatic, but tend to be brief, usually, usually lasting for a minute or less. As the episode passes, the person drops back to quiet sleep and wakes in the morning with no recollection of the incident. Sleep terrors are more common in children than adults. For most children who experience sleep terrors, the epi episodes subside and stop during adolescence. Nonetheless, about 4 to 5% of adults still experience sleep terrors. Now let's examine sleep sex. This involves abnormal sexual behaviors and experiences during sleep. Without realizing what they're doing, sleepers initiate some kind of sexual behavior, such as masturbation, groping or fondling their bed partner's genitals, or even sexual intercourse. Although sometimes described as loving or playful, more often sleep sex behaviors characterize as robotic, aggressive, and impersonal. Whether affectionate or forceful, the person's slept sleep sex behavior is usually depicted as being out of character with the individual's sexual behavior when awake. Such as the case in other parasomnias, the person typically has no memory of his or her actions the next day. Let's now examine sleepwalking and sleep-related eating disorder. Although the behavior of most sleepwalkers is pretty benign, others can react aggressively if touched or interrupted. Surprisingly, a sleepwalker can engage in elaborate and complicated behaviors such as unlocking locks, opening windows or doors, dismantling equipment, using tools, and even driving. About 15% of all children have had at least one sleepwalking episode. A commonly held notion is that sleepwalking disappears by adulthood. Although the prevalence does decrease, about 4% of adults are sleepwalkers, making it much more common in adulthood than was generally believed. Sleepwalking nightly into the kitchen, eating compulsively, and then awakening the next, next morning with no memory of having done so are the hallmarks of sleep-related eating disorder. This disorder affects about 1% of Americans, which equates to about 3 to 4 million people. Females are more likely uh, than males to sleep eat. Although sweet-tasting foods like candy and cake are most commonly consumed, the sleepwalker can also eat bizarre items such as raw bacon, dry pancake mix, salt sandwiches, coffee grounds, or even cat food. Interestingly, alcoholic beverages are hardly ever concern, consumed during an episode. The last disorder I'd like to talk about is the REM sleep behavior disorder. All the other parasomnomias uh, discussed thus far emerge during non-REM stages 3 and 4. In contrast, REM sleep behavior disorder represents a failure of the brain mechanisms that normally suppress voluntary actions during REM sleep. As a result, the person verbally and physically responds to the unfolding dream story, which they do remember in vivid detail when they awake. The enacted dream story usually uh, revolves around intense fear in response to being threatened or attacked by unfamiliar animals or people. In the dream, the person defensively fights back or tries to escape. Because the brain doesn't suppress these voluntary actions, the person may punch, kick, yell, swear, gesture, jump out of bed, crawl on the floor, or even run. In the process, they may grab or hit or choke their bed partner and also charge fully force into the bedroom furniture or perhaps crash through a window. Serious physical injuries to the dreamer or partner may require medical attention, which is often how this disorder is first diagnosed. Although it, it can occur at any age, REM sleep behavior disorder typically occurs in, in males over the age of 60. Once it does emerge, 
It is a chronic condition that tends to progressively become worse. Chronic REM sleep behavior disorder may be an early symptom of an underlying neurological disorder, such as Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease. Temporary episodes of REM sleep behavior disorder can be triggered by antidepressant medications, excessive caffeine use, or alcohol withdrawal. 